time, Arsenal are through to the next round of the Carabao Cup after a 3-0 win at Preston, and it was pretty comprehensive. I've got to say, I really like watching these Carabao games. I think partly because of the absence of pressure, real pressure. Um, it's always fun to see Arsenal drawn against unusual opposition, play at unusual grounds, and to get the opportunity to see um, players that we don't see every single week. I mean, Ethan and is obviously the one we're going to talk about a fair bit tonight, but I just like seeing, you know, a young goalkeeper like Tommy Setford, who I've never really seen before, seeing his style of play. I thought he was very good, actually. I really like um, the way that he carries himself in the game. He looks like a man with great maturity for his age, um, you know, able on the ball. I think he's a really interesting prospect and looks like a really good addition to, to the academy and, in fact, the first team setup. Um, but, I, yeah, I just find these games educational. I think you learn a lot. And I think Mikel Arteta will feel the same, to be honest. We learn more and more about Ethan and Neri every time we see him. Uh, and nothing that we saw tonight will dissuade us of our sort of growing consensus as Arsenal fans that we've got something special there. I mean, what a goal he scored. Beautiful shot into the far top corner. And he very nearly had another one. If it wasn't for the width of the woodwork, he would have ended up with another you know, picture-perfect top corner goal. This is a massive talent. 17 years old. Um... I think he should be playing more Premier League minutes. I know I've heard all the arguments about what well, Pep Guardiola was very patient with Phil Foden. Mikel Arteta worked under Pep at that time. I totally hear that. And I think that's great. And there's certainly merit in that way of thinking. I just think that he he looks ready. And in these instances where he's playing against guys who are 10 or sometimes 15 years older than him, he looks able to cope with that. And I know it's not Premier League level. But I, I really think we've seen him come on and make an impact in the Premier League. I think he's ready for that first Premier League start. I don't think it's going to be in the next few games. I think you know Newcastle, Inter, Chelsea away, it's a tough run. And I think Mikel Arteta will lean into experience. But I absolutely believe Ethan Ranieri is ready for that opportunity. Um, when we talk about Ethan Ranieri, we need to talk about Miles Lewis Skelly in the same breath. And I was slightly surprised that he didn't start tonight. That was one of my sort of big questions going into the game. Would we see how would they work it out with Zinchenko and Lewis Skelly? Zinchenko obviously needing minutes and hasn't been involved very much recently. I think he played ten minutes of football since the opening day. Would they start both? Would they that see one of them get an opportunity in midfield? You know, would it be the first time for all the talk that Zinchenko would start a game for Arsenal in a midfield role? I was intrigued to see. Didn't come to pass in the end. Lewis Skelly started on the bench. And I th suppose when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. I mean, Zinchenko, at the best of times, is not a 90-minute player. Uh, when he's coming back from injury, he certainly isn't. So I think it made sense to hold Lewis Skelly back. Bear in mind he was involved at Liverpool the weekend. And who knows, maybe Mikel Arteta has it in mind. He could be involved in some of the big games to come. He's shown already he trusts him on the biggest stages, on the biggest occasions. So where Zinchenko at left-back, it was a strong team. You know, the likes of Saliba, Jurian Timber, who... Clearly, I think, had just had cramp. I don't think if he'd had sustained any sort of injury against Liverpool that he would have been out there tonight. Um, the experience of Jorginho, Mikel Marino started the game, went off at half-time. I don't know exactly why. Hopefully, no injury there. Uh, Raheem Sterling, who was becoming, you know, sort of the Arsenal de facto choice in this competition, along with Gabriel Jesus. They're playing... They're probably going to play every round, you'd imagine, um, until we... It, unless we get to the very final stages and then Mikel Arteta will go stronger. So it's a very experienced, strong team. Um, and we dominated. We totally dominated, particularly in that first half. I mean, Preston didn't threaten the goal at all. Second half, it was a bit more even. Opening goal actually came from uh, Raheem, uh, not Raheem Sterling, Gabriel Jesus. Really nice finish. His first goal since January, I think I'm right in saying. Could do in the world of good. Great knockdown from Jakub Kivior. Jakub Kivior, I think, ends the game with two assists. Not sure he'll replicate that again in his Arsenal career, but a really good head down and a very strong finish from Jesus. Um, unusual, I suppose, in some respects. And listen, I, I'm quite realistic at, at this point in time about what we can expect from Jesus in terms of I, I don't think he's ever going to be a prolific goal scorer. I don't think he's ever going to be a 25, 30 goal man. He ought to be a 10-15 to 15 goal man. He ought to be. And I'm not sure he's going to make that this season, to be honest with you, um, when I look at how many minutes he's going to get and the way he's been playing. But he absolutely ought to be. And this is a step in the right direction for him. Um, 
I spoke about Ranieri, who I think was kind of the most eye-catching figure in that first half. Sensational goal. Uh, Kai Havertz comes on for Marino and scores a really great goal himself. Really good header. Nice delivery from Kivior. Fantastic header from Havertz. As soon as he came on, I mean, I just think Preston couldn't handle him at all. His athleticism. We're so used to seeing him starting games and then in the final 20 minutes still being the guy who's still running strong. Still, you know getting beyond defenders, out-muscling defenders. When you bring him on against a tired defence uh, and a defence from a division below at that as well, he's just absolutely going to thrive, and so that proved. Raheem Sterling won't believe he hasn't got a goal tonight. I mean, Kai Havertz did everything to set him up and he had a clearance off the line. There was another one where Sterling went into a challenge with a goalkeeper, couldn't quite squeeze it in. What I will say about Sterling is this. He gets in dangerous positions, right, and... Yes, he's playing in an Arsenal team against opposition who aren't as strong. But I think that is a, a trait he's had throughout his career. And in fact, a trait that Mikel Arteta helped encourage in him. That ability to pick up dangerous positions inside the penalty area. His execution is not always perfect. It's not always clean. It's not always pretty. He did have some nice touches tonight. Um, in, and he grew into the game. He looks like a player to me who's really lacking in rhythm. Is he going to get that rhythm? in what remains of this season? I'm not so sure, probably not without a few injuries, so I sort of hope it doesn't happen. Um, but he's an interesting player. He's an interesting player. He's a bit, you know, you never quite know what you're going to get from him. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure he's dramatically improved us, but I think, you know, the deal continues to be one that made sense when you think about his experience, his quality, the fact that we're probably paying him roughly what we paid Reese Nelson as a kind of like for like, um, I think it did make sense. Although Reese is doing quite well for Fulham by all accounts. Arsenal go through at the moment. Spurs are leading uh, Manchester City, but you know one would imagine they'll Spurs it up from here. Um, I hope they don't. You know, actually, I hope they beat City tonight simply because obviously they're not going to win it. It's a trophy, and also I think. City being out of this competition is always a good thing. It always feels like this is basically their tournament if they want it. And I don't know, maybe it's because the league's looking tougher, as I spoke about at the weekend. But I, I want to see us win this competition. I really do. I think that, I think we need to start racking up silverware. If we want to be a big club, and we are a big club, but if we want to be taken seriously, we need to start adding some, uh, you know, some dates around that Emirates Stadium you know, that interior lining where they've got every trophy win. You know, it's coming up for four years since the last one. Um, maybe five years, actually, sorry, by, by by next season. Will it? 2020? No, 2021, we won the FA Cup, I think. Four years. We need more trophies. That's what I'm saying. I'll leave it there for now, guys. Um, yeah, enjoyable game and maybe a nice sort of palate cleanser ahead of a really big week to come, starting with Newcastle on Saturday. I'll speak to you then, no doubt. Take care. Bye-bye.